Welcome to the Monetary Mixtape with Will Hoffman, founder of Hoffman Wealth Management. In this podcast, we help fellow Gen Xers simplify complex wealth issues that are important to Gen X. We do this by cutting out the mundane material and using a refreshing approach to finances in a way this skipped generation appreciates. Join us for this ride where we explore financial planning and wealth management as Will Hoffman draws from almost 20 years of experience and brings to you qualified guests to help be your latchkey to tricky monetary affairs. Welcome to Monetary Mixtape with your host, Will Hoffman, where we talk about all things to do with Generation X and how to best manage your finances. Thank you for joining us. I'm Wendy McConnell. Now, Will, last time we were talking about our favorite videos and VJs. How about bands from Gen X? What were the bands that you followed? Well, bands are just artists in general. The music, and really the music of any generation is what makes it timeless. You know, even going back to the big band era of the 30s and 40s and, you know, then the birth of rock and roll in the 50s and 60s. And then our generation really compounded on the the timelessness of music. You know, we had, we took rock and roll and made it into, you know, heavy metal and big hair bands and then you know, it evolved into grunge, you know, we were there with the birth of hip hop and, you know, watching that develop into to gangster rap and then into kind of the po- more popular hip hop. So my favorite, you know, I'm a hip hop junkie. I do like the, you know, Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg and Ice Cube, NWA. And then even as that developed into, you know, the bad boy artist with Notorious B.I.G. and Puff Daddy, th- those are sort of my iconic, timeless go-to uh, playlists and bands. And those are what's on my mixtape or those groups. I I do. It's hard to not think of, um, the icons of like Madonna and Guns N' Roses and Metallica, and even into the, uh, the first boy band, I guess not the first, if baby boomers are going to try to stay claim to the Beatles, but the first boy band with new kids on the block and watching, uh, all the girls of my generation just swoon to <laughs> Donnie Wahlberg and uh, Jordan Knight. Um, oh, yeah. New kids on the block. So, yeah, the music of any generation is what makes it timeless. Um, and our, ours, I think, had some of the best. And that's what dominates my mixtape. How about you, Wendy? What was your iconic uh, band or music of the generation? You know, I went through it. I went through all of the different mixes and, you know, I'm, you're a little bit behind me, Will. I hate to say it, but I'm, I've got a couple of years on you. So, um, but my very first band was, um, my very first favorite band was Journey. Okay. And that was back in, you know, but I was growing up when the Escape album with Don't Stop Believing was yeah. just released, you know, and Steve Perry was just, oh, swoon. <laughs> He was the the cutest thing I ever saw. (laughs) And then, of course, I uh, evolved into more of the hair bands, Bon Jovi and, you know, those types of things. But also Madonna. I mean, I was one of those little things that ran around (laughs) with all the bracelets and the bows of my hair and all of that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I mean, and it's just funny how everything was evolving. But at the same time, you know, there was things that were mainstays like Madonna was around forever. Michael Jackson was around right. forever. You know, these, these are also, well, I guess the seventies more was more of like that, what we call now classic rock, like right. Aerosmith and uh, David Bowie and that kind of thing. But yeah, it's just timeless with the way that everything has evolved. So I was, well, and, more- and the, even the, the kind of the, merger of the genres there's there's a great four-part series about the birth of hip-hop with dr dre and jimmy iovine who had his hands on albums from bruce springsteen and all the way up into dr dre and snoop dogg and and then eminem and 50 cent and he um you know how those two got together it's it's really a great four-part series called the defiant ones it's a great afternoon binge to to kind of tap back into our roots and understand how you take a guy who helped produce bruce springsteen's record and there he is when dr Dre and snoop dogg are um 
you know, producing the Quran. And it's just amazing how our generation was so eclectic when it came to merging of these genres and how we transcended one into the other. And it, it's amazing. And it's, it's part of what makes our uh, generation great. It's shameful that we're skipped over with so many things. And the timelessness of our generation is just remarkable. How do you feel about the band Lover Boy? You may be going out of my... Everybody's working for the weekend. Everybody oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Okay. I just wanted to throw it out there because this was, you know, as grunge came up, you know, a lot of these pop bands like Loverboy, REO, Speedwagon, whatever, right. you kind of didn't hear from them anymore. And the lead singer of um, Loverboy had said he blamed Pearl Jam and the start of grunge for killing their career. <laughs> <laughs> so I just always yeah, thought that Pearl was a Jam funny little, and funny little Nirvana. Tip. Yeah, that, that's the grunge stuff is... You know, rock and roll got the evolution um, sped up a lot with our generation. And we took it from classic rock all the way to, to grunge uh, quickly and saw the, the evolution of MTV helped that a ton. I still remember going into National Record Mart. I don't know if that was just a regional Pittsburgh thing or if those were everywhere, but flipping through cassettes and then CDs and the vinyl was a little bit before I was old enough to be in the music and to have an opinion, but Cassette um, singles. Yes, yeah, singles and CDs. <laughs> and now we just scroll iTunes. And, and it's amazing Absolutely. how fast vinyl was around for so, so long. And then we just, you know, eight track to our mixtapes on cassettes and then right. still waiting by the radio to hit play and record at the same time to, right. to catch and our the favorite DJ song. We talked over it right. every time the DJ talked over it. <laughs> right. And everybody's mixtape may have had the same song, but a different DJ interrupting it and. <laughs> It we started can at still a different hear, time, right. <laughs> ended at a different time. Right. Um, but the one thing we really truly hope we don't get skipped over in is when it comes to our money. Right. So we're going to talk about some of the timeless principles when it comes to investing. So, you know, Gen X, get ready. We're not skipping over you when it comes to that. <laughs> and uh, we want to know from you, Will, what are some of the, the eight timeless principles when it comes to investing? Well, we, and the eight, we've narrowed it down to eight. We're going to have a fantastic ebook um, that, that you can download to, um, to highlight these eight, but there's so many important principles that, that go beyond these eight. But the eight that we were able to focus on really help us to calm ourselves when the markets get volatile because the markets will get volatile. That, that's, that's kind of a foregone conclusion is we're going to be dealing with volatility We've dealt it with for it with it with uh, for our whole lives. We're going to be dealing with it for the rest of our lives, and understanding how that volatility uh, works and how to calm ourselves down and focus on a, a much bigger picture is what what's important. Um, and that's that first step. Focus on what you can control. Um, you know, often we get mixed up and caught up in the emotional part of investing, and we kind of forget why we're investing and what our goals are and why we need to be clear about our investing goals and our savings goals, building an investment strategy that, that really reflects our goals and values, our time horizon and our risk tolerance. We're going to talk a lot about that in some upcoming episodes. Um, and really every one of these points could be in an episode in, in and of itself. Um, but making sure that, that you're focusing on what you can control. It's very important for us that we have conversations with our clients about what they want to accomplish and why it's important. Um, so that when we have wild swings in the market, we can bring our clients back to listen, this is remember, this is why we're investing. This is what's important. We know that this time in the market is uncomfortable, um, or we know that, that we're having some great um, appreciation right now. So we want to make sure that we can have a kind of a home base to come back to and focusing on what they can control and, and why they're investing is important. Absolutely. Um, the second thing is, is putting time on your side. Um, the market has tended to reward long-term investors. Um, and it's time and, and long-term are the two things that, you know, the short-term shiny object syndrome is, is kind of what bothers me the most about all of the things that are available to investors to use. And there are some fantastic resources out there, but they tend to focus on very short-term um, goals and very, very short-term market movements or appreciation in an individual investment. What type of things do you consider shiny object syndrome? It's very easy to 
trip over the latest uh, fad in investing or the latest analyst who is really only looking out maybe weeks and months. We have 40 to 50 year careers that we're investing over to help fund a 30 to 40 year retirement. So um, focusing on a couple of weeks in an investment um, in the grand scheme of our entire uh, investing lives, it gets a little, we get a little bit too focused on that short term and it makes our stomach hurt. It makes us upset. It makes us make irrational decisions. Um, so we're making sure we're putting time on our side is, is very important as well. And it, it kind of leads into the next thing in, in tuning out the noise. Um, you know, this one is, is also very important. Um, you know, our generation saw the birth of the 24 hour news cycle. We moved beyond the evening news um, for half an hour and into a 24-hour news cycle where at any point in time, we can turn on the news and somebody will be telling us how bad we should feel. <laughs> and that has not changed. No. And, and there's now with even YouTube, there's you can go right to any investment channel and see anything you want about the market at any time. And their job is to drive fear. That's your job. That's why we watch. And that's important to, you know, point out because a lot of people don't really think about it in that way that, you know, the more fear that you feel, the more that you're going to continue to watch. Right. And that's and, and, their point. And that's one of the two emotions that drive our feelings about money and investing is fear and greed. You know, Michael Douglas in Wall Street back in the 80s said greed is good. And, and the other uh, emotion that follows or that, that drives our investing habits is, is fear. And the news and the 24 hour news cycle preys on our fear. They want us to continue to watch. And there's times when it's easy to continue to watch. Um, and typically those times are when it's, uh, when, when it's most volatile and most fearful. Um, like the pandemic. The pandemic. You think back to September 11th. Um, you think back to our generation with uh, the Gulf War and then the war following September 11th, it's very easy to sit there and watch and just continue to get fearful um, and continue to allow that to dominate your mindset and unfortunately dominate your investing habits and typically forces us to make irrational decisions at the wrong time. So don't. So don't. Well, it's important <laughs> to be educated. It's important to be knowledgeable about what's going on in the world, but just recognize what's happening and why and why that news cycle and 24 hour news uh, cycle is exists. It doesn't exist for us. It exists for advertising dollars. And, and Don't of, let it manipulate you. Right. Hey, sorry for the interruption. I know you're listening to the monetary mixtape because you want to learn about financial planning and wealth management. If you have any questions at the end, please head over to www.hoffmanwealth.com or look in the show notes to schedule a call with us realize that, you know, you can take from it what you need and leave the rest there. Right. Mm -hmm. And and then what ends up happening is because of that fear, you know, we end up trying to time the markets. And that, that leads us to the fourth point is try, not don't try to time the markets because you have to be right so many times when you're trying to time the market, whether it's even on an individual investment or, you know, the market in general, you have to be right so many times. You have to be right when you buy it. You have to be right in the middle of, of a conversation about not selling it or holding it. Um, and then you have to be correct again when it comes to selling. And it's very, very hard to do that. And it's always funny, especially right now, we're going through a little bit of, we're going through some market volatility that has folks a, a bit uncomfortable. And now is when all of those folks will merge with books or newsletters or something about how brilliant they were at some point in time in timing the market. But it's always remarkable that these folks are buying books or writing books and not, you know, they're not working in our industry. <laughs> they're not, they're not on Wall Street. They're they're writing a book and they're writing a book about hindsight, not necessarily looking forward. And we don't invest for the past. We invest for the future. Mm -hmm. um, and that's something that that kind of goes back to putting time on your side. Looking how an investment has performed is nice, and it makes us feel good about when we're making that decision, but we're not investing for the past. We're investing for what lies ahead. So that that becomes very important and trying not and not timing the market, but keeping your eye on your goals, your time horizon, your risk tolerance becomes very, very important. You know, and then the fifth point, understanding all kinds of risk. 
you know, we often get concerned with and focus on market risk and market fluctuations and what's going to cause an investment to go up, what's going to cause an investment to go down um, and those types of risks. Uh, but there are a lot of other types of risk in our lives when it comes to when it comes to our money that we need to consider. Uh, fortunately, every generation is living longer. Um, and longevity is a big thing with our generation. We got physical with Olivia Newton-John back in the 80s, and, and we're going to live longer than the previous generation, and the generation after us is going to live longer than we are. And that's just, that's just science and the way uh, our society is trending. There's inflation risk, dealing with inflation and high inflation conversations every day right now. Um, and those are just two to think about. Not saving enough, not earning enough is another risk to help combat longevity and inflation. So it's not just market fluctuations and moving up and down that's important to understand, but it's other types of risks that, that impact our financial plan and our financial future that need to be considered. Because what basically we are planning for longer retirements than any generation ever has before, which right. is great, but also scary. <laughs> sure. Right. And it's always funny, especially with our generation and who can blame them because, you know, jobs are tough. Jobs are hard. Um, you know, I've been very, very fortunate that, you know, if you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. So I don't feel like I'm working hard or in, in a profession that, that I don't enjoy, but our generation wants to also retire earlier. Oh yeah. So understanding that there's a lot of things that need to happen to be able to retire in advance of our parents uh, is important. And understanding that risk is, is one of them and all those types of risks. So that leads to, you know, emotions, you know, you want to get yes. out earlier, but yet you need to fund something for longer. So it's important to keep your emotions in check. Yes. And that's, that kind of goes back to the, some of the other points is focusing on what you can control because there is going to be an emotional roller coaster when it comes to investing. There's going to be euphoria of the highs. There's going to be uh, regret and concern at the lows um, and understanding the emotional roller coaster is important. And making sure that you're not acting um, irrationally when you're on that emotional roller coaster is, is important. And that's why, you know, the do it yourself investor has typically underperformed the market um, by a long shot because they're, they're falling victim to their behavioral finance psychology and their own emotional misgivings instead of. Uh, what the markets tell us and what history tells us and about uh, avoiding those emotional roller coasters. And, and it's something that, you know, if you liken it to your health, nobody wants to go to the doctor. Nobody wants to be sick. Nobody wants to have a procedure, but we do those things regardless of how we feel about them so that we can live longer and investing so you can retire earlier or retire longer is the same thing. Yes, the market hurts. Yes, it's tough to make an investment with some ambiguity, but we're doing it for for the long run. And uh, the emotional roller coaster needs to be considered and then, you know, avoided when it comes to making those decisions. So sometimes you have to go back to the old adage, it's for your own good. Right. <laughs> it's for your own good. All right. We've talked about before with when to get started. So yes. that's one of the issues when you're talking about principles, right? Yes. The cost of uh, procrastination is big and waiting to get started, or even if you've started waiting to address some financial issues or waiting to get your portfolios organized and focused on what's important. It's no different than anything else. It's no different than jumping on the treadmill or starting the exercise. It's no different than household chores that we really don't want to do. So we procrastinate. It was no different than us doing our homework when nobody was around to watch. And we decided to come home from work and, uh, you know, watch M or from school and watch MTV for a little bit. And we should have been doing our homework. It's the same thing, making sure that you're addressing what's important. Um, and at the very least, getting a second opinion and maybe you find out, hey, everything's just fine. Now, um, let me ask you, when you say waiting to get started, organizing, planning, um, do you mean with specifically the financial advisor aspect of it? Or are you talking about saving? Either. Okay. Really, you know, if, if you haven't started saving yet, right now is the time to start. And that that's um, regardless of how you're saving or what you're investing in. If you have not started saving yet, and you, especially if you're a Gen Xer, start right now. Because 
Time is running out. Time is running out. Keeping time on your side is important. Um, if you have started saving and you're confused about how everything is going to work for your retirement, get help right now. Ask somebody, see, a, see us, see an advisor. And that kind of leads into the last principle, you know, delegating the details and understanding um, that there is professional help for all aspects of your financial life, for the planning, for the portfolio management. Uh, but there's so much more that goes into that and what we do. You know, the wealth management formula is not just uh, picking the right investments. It is beyond the investment consulting. It is, you know, working with other professionals on taxes, on, you know, some of the legal issues or trusts or titling accounts or making sure that what you want to have happen when you pass it occurs. Um, if we are inheriting assets, making sure that that happens in a, in a way that a lawyer can help us or that an accountant can make sure we understand the tax ramifications of that. You know, it's delegating those details is important. You know, we spend a lot of time training ourselves on our education. Um, accountants and, and attorneys are no different and they're there to help. Granted, the, there's a cost for their services, but they're there to help. Um, we're there to help and making sure that these other seven principles are always in the forefront of, of the decisions that we're making and that we're not falling victim to, to some mistakes that, that our generation could make and has seen. So let me strip it down then. Like say somebody has been, you know, contributing to their 401k for the last 20 years, but that's all they've done. I mean, they're saving, they're saving. It's in the 401k. Uh, they're taking advantage of everything they can take advantage when it comes to, you know, company matching and all of that sort of stuff. What is the next step? What is the, you know, what is it that they need to be doing to properly prepare? Understanding that there are other types of accounts you can be saving in and using. Um, understanding that, Taxes are going to play a big part of your income in retirement and that there are, there, you know, the 401k is going to be taxed. So understanding if, if your company offers maybe a Roth 401k, how that could work. If you're eligible to participate in a Roth IRA, uh, doing that on your own so that you can kind of round out a, a tax triangle there to make sure that your, your distributions are going to have different tax uh, impacts or options, excuse me, and understanding your goals. Because it never fails that somebody wants to retire at age 55 and doesn't realize that their 401k is really not available until they're 59 and a half. Now, there's some things that can be done prior to 59 and a half that can help that. But, you know, there's a four year time period there that there's going to be maybe some heavy tax impacts if you do want to retire at 55. Mm -hmm. So there's some other things you should be planning for and doing leading up to that retirement date. All right. You know what that means to me? Well, that means I got to get on the ball. There we go. <laughs> download, download the ebook, get started there and see how you feel with some of those principles and then get started on your planning. Don't wait. Don't procrastinate. We know that. Yes. You're saying right now it's important to start. Then you did mention that this, all of these timeless, eight timeless principles of investing will be in an ebook. And where can we go to get that? And how can people get in touch with you? Um, the link will be in the show notes to go to download the ebook. It'll take you right to our website. So we'll have that there also, which is a great place to to be able to schedule a call with us, um, to have a discovery conversation about what you've been doing, what you'd like to do when it comes to your financial plan and how we can help and get you pointed in the right direction. And what is the website? It's hoffmanwealth.com. There's right in the upper right-hand corner, there's links to uh, to schedule an appointment. If, if you do have some risk tolerance questions, that's going to be the next episode to chat about uh, risk tolerance and making sure that you are focused on avoiding that emotional roller coaster and the scary uh, things that the market can throw at us from time to time. Well, thank you, Will, uh, for all of this valuable information and um, making me get a little curious about hip hop. I yeah, <laughs> maybe, maybe it's, I'll dig into a little bit before the next you never time. turn around. I think I told you the story on the last episode. I share a building with my dad and I had hip hop. No, I, I can remember the song. It was Dr. Drain, Snoop Dogg, uh, nothing but a G thing was on the radio. My dad came in and said, when are you going to outgrow this? I said, dad, it's not going to happen. Doesn't no look chance. that way. No, nope. nope. I'm going to be bumping Biggie at the, in the uh, <laughs> carpool drop off line uh, as long as I'm there. Oh, your kids are going to love it. Yep. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> well, thank you for joining us on Monetary Mixtape with Will Hoffman. Please follow, like, and share this podcast with your friends. Until next time, I'm Wendy McConnell. Don't bounce just yet. The streetlights haven't come on. Thank you for listening to the Monetary Mixtape Podcast. If you thought this episode was dope, then click the follow button to be notified when we drop a new episode. Visit our website at hoffmanwealth.com or give us a call at 724-522-5411. And don't forget to click the follow button to be notified when new episodes become available. The information covered and posted represents the views and opinions of the guest and does not necessarily represent the views or opinions of Hoffman Wealth Management. The content has been made available for informational and educational purposes only. The content is not intended to be a substitute for professional investing advice. Always seek the advice of your financial advisor or other qualified financial service providers with any questions you may have regarding your investment planning. Securities offered through LPL Financial, member FINRA SIPC. Investment advice offered through Private Advisor Group, a registered investment advisor. Private Advisor Group and Hoffman Wealth Management are separate entities from LPL Financial. All performance referenced is historical and is no guarantee of future results. All indices are unmanaged and may not be invested into directly.